Good morning, everyone. It's 9.34 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The date is 1.30 of 2013. I have before us a daily chart of the S&P 500 in the Market Maker platform. And we have market makers who trade S&P 500 and spies, and we have alert services for the people that are in our trader group worldwide. Therefore, as I tell you right now that the S&P is up here toward these all-time 2007 highs, this is 1505, and we talked about this before in part of the uh, new MMT index training people, people that trade uh, S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. Well, here we can clearly see that we're up here at the very high. We ran very quickly, very fast. And having said that, that is a wall of resistance there. However, there are some other areas. 513 would be the next major resistance at a half a delta up. And 519 would be one full delta up from here, which would be $14.08 higher. And to reach that half delta, the S&P would have to climb up another 8.45. So basically... What I'm going to say is, is that each time that we make these higher highs in this bull run for calendar January 2013, it, there will be a point where price exhaustion will play its role. And we've always gone through these and we've gotten our way right up here to these all time highs that we said that we could go to right to the mark. And right now, the S&P is printing at 1504 by 1505 .18, right here. And that's a daily contraction. It's, it's not a confirmed reversal until you start breaking below the half daily bars. This half daily bar right here is 1503.72. Now, having said what the chart said, I'd like to talk a little bit about the economic data. Economy in U.S. contracts as defense spending slumps. That's just blaming it on them. Listen, we have negative GDP growth. Gross domestic product, that's the volume of all goods and services produced, dropped at an 0.1% annual rate. Weaker than any economist's forecast in a Bloomberg survey and the worst performance since the second quarter of 2009. We haven't had a negative GDP growth since that time. But we also know that we had a big Hurricane Sandy and they're going to have to rebuild this summer. But the problem is, let's take a look. We haven't had it. The, that was back in 2009 when the world's largest economy was still in a recession. Commerce Department figures showed today in Washington a decline of government outlays and smaller gain in stockpiles subtracted a combined 2.6% percentage points okay, from growth. Bolstered by drop in fuel prices. Everybody know when that came down. Consumer spending accelerated at the biggest part of the economy overcame Superstorm Sandy, a bitter presidential contest, and Washington budget battles. So the Federal Reserve policymakers are meeting today, everyone, are projected to press on with plans to pump money into the world's largest economy. The reason why the S&P is up here this high, everyone, is for one reason one reason only. Worldwide, you have massive liquidity coming in. You have QE3 that's starting to work. People are still able to get cheaper money. Look, what happened the last couple of quarters is, is people were scared to death. But here, let's just take a look at uh, stocks are up because of that. But the median forecast of 83 economists surveyed by Bloomberg called for a 1.1% gain in GDP projections, projections ranging from 0.3% to 2.1%. The GDP estimates is the first of three of four quarters. So there's three, four, so it's the first one. 
There will be other releases that are going to be scheduled in February and March. Government outlays, well, here's the thing. Government outlays dropped at a 6.6% annual pace from October through December, subtracting 1.3 percentage points from the GDP. The decrease was led by a 22.2% fall in defense. That was the biggest since 1972, following the Vietnam War. How about that? Inventories grew at a $20 billion annual rate, down from $60.3 billion pace in the third quarter. Today's report showed us that. The slowdown cut GDP by an additional 1.3 percentage points. A drop in overseas sales also showed the economy was weaker last quarter, when sales overseas dropped, you know. So, exports fell at a 5.0% plus it rose to 5.7% annual rate. 5.7% annual rate, that's the biggest decline since the first three months of 2009. That led to a widening of the trade gap that reduced the GDP by another 0.25 percentage points. How about that? Yes, there was a little bit of consumer pickup. We just came out of the holidays, for crying out loud. One of the other things, corporate spending came did, came back on board. Once they who knew they were president, they started upgrading a little bit. It climbed 2.6%. So it climbed at a 12.4 uh, percentage pace. But let's, let me just tell you something. That was in the equipment and software. And then... Just let me tell you another thing, that when we get holiday time frames, uh, you get a little bit more consumer spending. The problem is the consumer savings rate is at all-time lows with the current spending cycle is what I'm really wanting to get at with you now. And there are uh, more things. The Fed is going to do what it's going to do. The Federal Open Market Committee is going to report any time now. And not only that, it's a two-day meeting today. And uh, the statement from the Fed policymakers at the end of their two-day meeting may say the central bank will continue, will continue uh, with its balance sheet expansion. Okay, there's lots of things that's going to happen. Uh, recent report signals consumer confidence. Uh, listen, we all know that with low rates, money is cheap, and the housing market has come up, and that's good. We know that cars and light trucks had 15.3 million units on an annual rate in December after 15.5 million uh, the prior month. So... You know, we've had where people went out and they were able to buy cars. Money is cheaper and everything is going the right way. But let's just take a look at negative growth is negative growth. And we're at the top of a 2007 high in the S&P. And in our platform, we can see that each one of these lines is a teeny value. It's 5.63 cents. And, uh, this is how accurate this last breakout has been. And let's just take a look at it at a daily. It's right up here on that wall of resistance in the daily with the half bar being here at 1503. And the thing about it is you can see that each one of the lines are $5.63. And we've gone one, two, three, four, five, six of those right up to this resistance level right here. So six times at an average of five dollars, that's about 30 handles to the upside. Now, when markets get exhausted, they're going to have to deal with a pullback. And markets that are in extreme bull runs, as this one has started calendar 2013, you've got to break below the half bars and break these support levels to verify it that a pullback would be in play. And you have to have bigger daily distribution bars, just like you had on the upside bars. But the wall of resistance is up here, and the fear factor is very complacent, meaning that we are 2007 lows in the fear factor. That's on the VIX, the 500, 
volatility index or S&P 500 volatility index at all time lows. Now how much of this has been electronically controlled is a question that people may want to ask themselves. Because the data here is that the markets have a lot of money coming out of the bonds and bonds, all that money that's coming out of there, they're starting to come back into equities up here toward the upper highs of the S&P 500. When they should have been buying the S&P 500 back over here on dips and every time we've had dips from corrections and we will get more corrections but every time we made higher high we, 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 we pulled back and we worked our way all the way up here back to the 2007 highs when the financial crisis really started in the S&P and, and, and 2000 there's different time frames on the monthly and the weeklies that we have however just know that this particular move is where buyers would be coming in and we've gone parabolically up from every one of the pullbacks that we get I just want to show you before we made that last high how that looks right here okay let me blow up this part of it MMT and this is for all our traders worldwide okay every one of you need to know that one thing the market maker system in these indexes are going to be right and what we look for is where the prices start to diminish and that each upper end of our delta range you get more of a wall of resistance nothing can be verified until this is where it was on 1231 right here 2012 when they opened it up boy right here on one two that S&P came back it held the top of the range and we've just been stair stepping right up to them those highs now we'll see what the broader market wants to do moving forward about the lower growth and we're in the full swing of earnings season right now and we're starting February off in a couple of days from now and the first calendar month of January which will be classified in my view a complete bull breakout to test these eyes in this calendar month there's going to be 11 more months and we're going to measure what I had said before. Look at that negative GDP growth isn't that good. But let me tell you something right here on the three sixteen fifteen hundred dollar put, which I did earlier. Look at the at that time there was only seven thousand contracts. Right now it's fifteen thousand nine hundred seventy seven. People are buying big volume here on the S and P three sixteen fifteen hundred dollar put. It's been totally manipulated that particular price on the S&P and I'm going to get that put for you. I'm going to show you mathematically again. This is called a put chart. And what I would like to show you again, MMTs and our worldwide traders, is that these contracts on and this is a weekly now on week one one they were as high as 63 uh, uh, they were they were very very high they, they were 63 dollars a contract right down here on 12 one the high of the week was 107 dollars they have as the S&P has ran its breakout course the put side of the S&P has been mutilated to wholesale entries based on when that was rising like that what that means is that these put contracts right here hit a low and you can see where they were $120 up here the, the, the readings and $63 right here and this is the weekly low that today People have really been buying them based on that weak GDP growth. But nonetheless, we still have an extreme bull in play. However, that top end of resistances will become weak. And that each upper end of the mathematical equation in our platform, the next level is 513.1513. And we're 6.65 .6 handles from there. That would be a half a delta in our system for today that's at 5.63 per line 
That's a teeny value. That's 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 what that is, and our system is 16th. So here is the daily bar today. There's all the alerts and the diamond alert, and there is that resistance level. But we broke higher. We haven't sold off on the news, and we're in the middle of the earnings season. But the upper end of the market will have a pullback. It's an extreme bull that needs to rest a little bit, come back down and get some more of that money out of the bond market. And are they going to look past this negative GDP growth will be the next key factor. So this is the update. It's a major update in the SMF S&P 500 index alert.